The long-awaited return of Glory heavyweight legend Bader Hari recently took place at Glory 51. In front of a sold-out crowd at Ahoy Rotterdam, he battled bitter rival Hesdy Gerges, who eight years prior captured the It Showtime Championship when the bad boy was disqualified after kicking Gerges while on the canvas. Would it be different this time around? A title elimination bout took place in the welterweight division when former champion and number one ranked Cedric Dumbe took on third ranked Alim Nabiev, with the winner earning a title shot at new title holder Haruk Gregorian. The welterweights also did battle in the one night four man tournament, with the winner emerging a top contender in the division. All this and more up next on Rewind. <laughs> We start with highlights in the featherweight division with two of the new breed looking to crack into the top 10. Spasaro, Glunder, and Leo Pinto slugging it out for three rounds here, and it was a pretty competitive contest. Yeah, it was the first round, the low blow. We weren't sure um, how Massaro was going to recover from it, but um, he did a good job at continually pushing forward. But let me tell you, um, Leo Pinto did a good job at showing his boxing, really standing head to head, countering back. You can really see the, the, the involvement in his boxing, his hands, and his kickboxing style. But a lot of clinching in that third round. Both guys really wanted to box head to head, but it seemed to cause a lot of clinching, um, especially with the knees up the middle. All five of our ringside judges score them out the same. 29, 28, a unanimous decision for your winner, Masara Glunder. Up next, two fighters were making their glory debut, looking to make an impact in the middleweight division. Do you remember your pro debut, Joe? How nervous were you? Oh, it's always a nerve-wracking fight for your pro debut. Ready? You want to start. You fight. have a brand new, fresh start to your career, and you want to start it off on the right foot. They put Boss Vanderpoon in a very precarious situation. He's got to fight Kevin Van Beek, who's wearing the white gloves, who has a great amateur background, and is highly talented at a Coliseum gym. Yeah, that's a big advantage coming from Coliseum gym, having some of the best Dutch fighters. You've got Jason Wilness, Jafar Wilness. The Johnny Best. Oh, 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 is that a One, it is indeed. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gloves up. Fight. The pro debut turning into a disaster so far for Vandercroot as Hegren's starting to bear down. That Hegren has a lot of power, and you're going to see him constantly moving forward. And he's putting a lot of pressure on with his boxing.
Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. The end comes with an official time of two minutes, 48 seconds of that very first round and ends by knockout for your winner, Kevin Van Heekren. In lightweight action, fourth-ranked Tijani, the wonder boy Vistati out of the Netherlands, was looking to make it six out of seven wins inside the glory ring as he went up against the Lion, Anil Cabri of Turkey, with a career 17-1 record, making his glory debut. Seven inches shorter, a seven-inch reach disadvantage. He's wearing the black gloves. Best time, the taller man in the white. Let's see how Vistati starts out, probably using his jab in his movement. Because he knows Cabri wants to get on the inside, so he's probably got a few knees waiting. This doesn't look like just maybe one weight class difference. As Tati looks almost two weight classes ahead of Cabri. That's a big height advantage, but let's see what Cabri can do. A good low kick could start off, good body punches on the inside, but he just can't stay at the end of this Tati's punches. Nice counter. Good strategy for Bob Cabri to get on the inside. Great contention of Turkish fans who are some of the most passionate in the world. And that left hand touch best time. <laughs> Bastani is becoming a, a veteran very quickly. He's 5-1 in glory. His only one loss came in a tournament where he had a broken foot. And he still went on to compete because he thought his boxing against Stoya and Kobrinsky would have been enough. But unfortunately, it was his one loss. He wants to get back into those winning moves. to relax a little bit more, not get overly excited. And you can see that. Well, the one complaint about this toddy is that he loses focus sometimes in fights. Yeah, uh, Danny DeVry from Coliseum says he gets bored. He says he dominates a lot, especially in sparring, so. Nice back kick, a spinning one at that from Kabri, which sends this toddy down. Not considered a knockdown because there wasn't much damage. Nice head movement from Kabri. So far in this round is Kabri. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an official time of two minutes, 17 seconds of that very first round, and this one ruled a technical knockout. For your winner, Tijani Bestati. With the win, Bestati sends another message that he is ready for a title shot. We're just getting started on Rewind. Up later, the bad blood between Badr Hari and Hesti Gerges finally gets settled in the glory ring. And Cedric Dumbe continues on his road to regain the welterweight belt, but challenger Alim Naviev has other ideas. Up next, the one-night four-man welterweight tournament and the much-anticipated debut of welterweight Mohamed Jaraya. Welcome back to Rewind. The welterweight division of glory is deep with talented and experienced fighters, including new champion Haruk Gregorian, along with former champion Cedric Dumbe, Mertel Grunhardt, and Nikki Holtzkin. In 2018, Glory signed 21-year-old Mohamed Jiraiya, but despite his young age, Jiraiya was in search of career victory number 64. Miles Simpson was making his Glory debut and winner of 64 career victories of his own, and he had every intention of stealing the spotlight. Jiraiya in the white gloves, Simpson from Rotterdam hey! in the black, three rounds. For sure. Should he be Joe? Well, we're gonna find out because he seems to be very confident. He's got a lot of experience, so I'm sure.
sure he's fought guys with a lot of power before. Jariah not afraid to take two to give one. I like what Miles Simpson did there. He went with a knee up the middle. So he's going to try to capitalize on Jariah's forward pressure. For half of Jariah's wins have come by knockout. High school, Including his victory over Bourdain Bin Mo back in February of 2016. I'm not exaggerating, ladies and gentlemen. One of the greatest kickboxing fights in history. Go watch it later tonight after Glory. Push kick right corner, front kick. Not a knockdown. Back up comes Jariah. Yeah, good back and forth kicking. No guy really letting the other gain momentum. All going right back. here for 80 seconds. Good inside low kick from Jariah. Yeah, he's gone to that inside low kick quite a few times. He wants to increase his fan base. And that was exactly what fans like to see. Stop. They want violence, they want knockouts. Catch, okay? Says he can provide that. Hey. Yeah, that's going to make you a fan favorite when you lay it out there all the time. Hook connected. Good head movement from Simpson. Oh, Jeff, Simpson looking to play spoiler here tonight. He's a veteran, Joe. 64 pro wins. Hey. Like he said his key factor is just being a nasty hey. welterweight. Hey, 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 hey. They don't look too much different in size. Let's Wait. see what that, what that does for the energy of Jiraiya. He's got more weight on him and he had to cut him. Less so. Good advantage as Jiraiya rips the ball. Stop! Hey! Hey! What would your advice be to Jariah? Would you prefer he stayed out of weight class or do you like him at this? Stop! Well, it, it's, it's hard to tell because I haven't been there through training in those, those last few weeks of camp. But um, if he's comfortable with it, I mean, you look at some of the other welterweights like Myrtle Grunhardt, they're big boys. Arun Gregorian. So maybe with the, the more experienced the, the glory veterans, it might give him a harder time. Stop! Catch. Hey! Close first round. Hey. We do have open scoring here tonight if you're just joining us. Five judges will see exactly what they thought. That left hand, that might have been a knockdown as Simpson's blood came down. But it's Sushi Onori, apparently not interested. Hey. Round two, schedule four and three here in the welterweight division. Low, he seems to be doing well. Look at Tom's strikes, Joe. Not even close. Simpson almost doubled up Jariah there in round one. There's Danny DeVries, the trainer, manager. Stop! Muhammad Jariah, Coliseum Gym, and Boots so What did you think about that first round? Well, I thought it was a very close round back and forth. Again, Jariah comes forward, and you can see when he throws, but that, I just think it's, it's coming down to damage. Those inside hey. kicks Jariah's are throwing are doing more damage, so yeah, I, I, I agree with that first round. Despite being landed 2-1, it's power and every time Jariah's throwing that inside low kick, it's hey. swiping Simpson's leg. It's coming down to damage. There's some damage. Takes a moment to breathe. Not much power left in Simpson's punches. Wait! Seems like the high paced fight in the second round is going to favor Jariah. Stop! Wait! Don't forget to get. Exchange, <laughs> 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 Seems like Simpson's having a hard time finding 
Breaking his footing on that canvas. Stop! He like that uppercut he landed. Break! Wait! Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals from our five ringside judges. Three of our judges scored about 29-28. The two remaining judges see it 30-27. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Mohamed Jariah! The Destroyer may not have been destructive, but did enough to win, earning victory in his glory debut. Up next, 
highlights from the one-night four-man contender tournament, where you must fight and win twice in one night to claim the Ramon Deckers trophy and get one step closer to a title shot. In the first semifinal, Tong Chai Sitsong Pinong out of Thailand, winner of 136 professional fights, took on Alan Scheinson of Argentina, winner of 50 career victories of his own. We welcome you back to the Rotterdam Ahoy Arena, jumping to some highlights from our opening contest here in the welterweight tournament. And round one was really close. Both guys exchanged good right hands, good boxing. Both had their moments with their kicks. Round two, Scheinson seemed to pick it up a little bit more. He seemed to outscore Tong Chai, and the judges scored him with that round. Round three was more of Tong Chai. He seemed to do a better job at finding his hands with his boxing. And then eventually he started going to the body, hurt Scheinson to the body, and that seemed to be the difference in that round. Here's our strike statistics. Punches the edge to Scheinson, as are the kicks, but needs some devastating ones at that. Lean towards Tong Chai. Ladies and gentlemen, after three tournament rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's look at the totals from our five ringside judges. They give us back a split decision. Two judges score the bout 29-28, Tong Chai. Two judges also have it, 29-28, Shineson. And our fifth and final judge also scores the bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision. And now advancing to the tournament final. Tong Chai, Sit Song Pino. Alan Scheinson cannot believe it. It's like he lost his keys. In a decision that Scheinson couldn't believe wasn't his, Tong Chai moved on to face the winner of semifinal two. Here, Ivan, Mr. Cool Dannenberg, took on 22 year old Jimmy Vigneault of France, winner of 61 career victories, half of those by knockout. Jumping to some highlights from our semifinal. First two rounds were really close. Vigneault seemed to do a good job countering back. Dannenberg found some success with his, with his boxing. There he got kind of knocked off balance from that straight left from Vigneault. But a lot of success in the boxing of Dannenberg. A lot of forward pressure. And then in the third round, it seemed like Vigneault started to fade. Some blood from the nose and the eye. And Dannenberg did find some good combinations pressuring with his boxing. And his our strike statistics punches 49 to 15 for Dannenberg, but kicks 21 to 2 for Vigno. Ladies and gentlemen, after three tournament rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's look at the totals from our five ringside judges. They give us back a split decision. Scoring this bout 30 27 from two of our judges for Dannenberg. Two judges have a 29 28 Vigno. And our fifth and final judge scores it 29-28 for your winner by split decision. Now advancing to the tournament final, Ivan Dannenberg! And we're going to score Mr. Cool, a winner by split decision. With the victory, Ivan Dannenberg took on Tong Chai in the tournament final. Let's look at our highlights. Dannenberg versus Tong Chai. Yeah, Dannenberg started good, staying long with his punches, good punch combinations. Tried to land the knees. Uh, not very successful with his kicks and knees in this fight. His advantage came in the box. But we did see a lot of clinching, dumping, and, and messy fighting on the inside. But it seemed like Dannenberg was doing the better in the combination exchanges. Here's that end flurry. Dannenberg trying to create as much space as he can to try to steal that last round. Here are our final strike statistics. Tong Chai with more kicks and knees, but Dannenberg substantially landing more punches. Ladies and gentlemen, after three more tournament rounds, we go the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals. One judge scores at 29-28. The remaining four all score at 30-27. It's a unanimous decision for your winner. And now, contender tournament champion, Ivan Dannenberg! Here to present the Ramon Deckers Trophy and Certificate, Glory Chairman Pierre Anderon and our Managing Director of Sport, Cor Hammers. Congratulations to Ivan Dannenberg, who 
wins the welterweight contender tournament. Joe, how bright is his future in this division? Well, I just think he's so talented. He's long, he's rangy, um, and he just showed that he has some room for improvement, and that's what's so great about the sport. So he's got to go back with his coach, Clyde Peters, work on some distance control, and I think he's going to be a big threat to the welterweight division. In other action, Tomas Mosny handily defeated Daniel Skvor in the heavyweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's look at the totals. Two of our judges score the bout 29-28. The remaining three score at 30-27, all for your winner by unanimous decision. Tomas Mosny! When we return on Rewind, the number one and number three contender duel it out in a welterweight title elimination bout. And then later on, the bad blood gets settled when Badr Hari returns to the glory ring to take on rival Hezdi Gurgis, a fight eight years in the making. The welterweight division has seen three champions since Nikki Holtzkin, who held the belt until Glory Collision in December of 2016. Since then, Cedric Dumbay, Mertel Grunhardt, and now Haruk Gregorian have stood atop the division. Standing at number three in the rankings is Alim Nabiev, who most recently defeated Holtzkin to move into title contention. The main event in the Glory Superfight Series featured a title elimination bout between number one ranked Cedric Dumbay and third ranked Alain Nabiev, with the winner earning the right to face Haruk Gregorian. A world title shot hangs in the balance between the professor, Alain Nabiev and the Black Gloves, and the best, Ready? Cedric Ready? Dumbay, Fight. Gary White. People think these guys have very similar styles, so it's going to be interesting how they approach the fight. Both guys can adapt really well. They can pressure or move. So I think there you go already, switching stances for uh, Nabiev. Nabiev, the naturally bigger guy. How powerful that play in this fight. Well, he does have good kicks, so I'm sure he's going to want to let those go. Where Dubay is going to want to counter a little bit. You're going to see him use his uppercuts and unorthodox style striking. Break! 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 Welterweight champion Haruk Gregorian of a successful first round knockout in Chicago at Glory 50 over Myrtle Grunhart. Nice uppercut from in that exchange for Dumbay. He's really good at mixing those uppercuts. He'll he'll fake you with a hook and then just rip one right up the middle. Looks like this is gonna be a chess match, Joe. Yeah, very technical. It's very hard when Navien keeps switching stances. Dubay's throwing weird strikes. Break! I go. Break! Here's the problem. Nabiev likes to do that stuff too, Joe, so he may start doing it now that he's seen Cedric do it. Well, I think it was both of their plans against Nikki, so I don't know if that's Nabiev's true style, but he wants to give it back. Dubay said in the interviews, he said, Nabiev does it, he's a clown, but what I'm doing, I'm just playing around. I'm not too sure what that meant, but he thinks there's a difference. Lost in translation. I think. He thinks there's a difference between the way they do it. Fight! Dubay's confident that he's going to knock Nabiev out, and then wants to do the same to Haruk Gregorian, May 12th. Fight! Great. Right. Obviously, a big following there. Come here, fight! 
fighting with emotion and passion. Fight. But both these guys do the same thing, so it's not going to work. As you said, they're going to cancel each other out. Round two scheduled for three. All five judges give round one to Cedric Dumbe. That was a hard round to score. Yes, I thought so. Yeah, because at least Nabiev's moving forward. But it's that counter fighting of Dumbe that seems to be doing the best. He's waiting, and then he's going to... Warning, hold in. Combination there from Dubé, not a lot of almost got caught with that knee as he was smiling. Public warning, next time deduct a point. You understand? Timing. The right kick of Nabiev could be a good time for Nabiev to go upstairs with that right hand. Left hand landed for Nabiev, best punch of the fight. Push, push. Cedric Dubé never lets you gain momentum. Once you hit him, he's going to come back with a combination, usually landing more than you do. Jumbe, 68 pro wins, 39 knockouts, but amazingly, he doesn't have one in glory. He's six of one, all seven fights going the distance. But he's proved his mettle. Look at the talent he's faced in those seven fights, the best of the best. Yeah, no easy fights in glory for Jumbe. From Nabiev off the guard of Dupe. Nabiev with a right hand that snuck through. He's having a better round two. Is the man from Russia. Fighting out of Azerbaijan. Nabiev talking a little junk. Russian, I don't think Dupe knows it. They're speaking with their fists and kicks. So it looks like the style of clap, uh, sorry, the similarity in style is really showing the pace of the fight. They're difficult to land on both of these guys. The third and final round of this welterweight main event here on the Glory Super Fight Series. Cedric Dubé won. All five judges score cards in the first round. In the second, Nabiev gets four of the five. So it does indeed come down to this third. <laughs> Joe, you predicted that Nabiev would probably win this fight. What has he shown you so far? Well, it's his pressure, and I think that's what's doing well, and especially in that second round. He can't back up when Dubé counters. He's going to have to stand his ground a little bit more. Just keep Dubé against the ropes. Total strikes, 38 and 38. Yeah, fighting backwards, good strategy for, for Nabiev. He's got to shut down Dubé coming forward. This left hand for Namiyev. Wobble Dube a little bit. Got him again, and he's off kilter. He's boxing from the southpaw. Best success he's had yet. Short little punches, but they are finding their mark. Namiyev starting to take over here in round three. That's what he needs to do. Stay in the southpaw and box. Now Dube southpaw. 
After three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals from our five ringside judges. They score this bout 29 28, Dumbe. 29 28, Nabiev. And our three remaining judges have it 29 28 for your winner by split decision, Ali Nabiev. A new title challenger has entered the scene with Alim Nabiev taking the decision and thus earning a title shot against current champion Haruk Gregorian. We'll step aside one more time, but when we come back, the return of Vader Hare. Welcome back to Rewind. Back in 2010, Badr Hari and Hezdi Gerges did battle for the then It's Showtime Championship. Badr Hari was leading and seemed on his way to victory. After putting Gerges on the canvas, he inexplicably kicked him in the face while down, thus disqualifying himself and giving Gerges the title. Now, eight years later, they return to the ring to meet again and settle things once and for all. Tail of the tape for this This is a 3 minutes, 3 down, okay? No cringing. Right, good fight. Okay. 
Doesn't want to overcommit and open up. Right now, it's target practice for Byron Hart. Yeah, he's just picking his jab, using his body kicks. But maybe Gerges is trying to weather the early storm, trying to take Bader in the later rounds. Nice counter low kick from Gerges. If there's one area that Gerges has the advantage, it has to be low kicks. Nice close range defense from Hesley.
Ladies and gentlemen, your main event of the evening goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals. One judge scores the bout 29-28. The four remaining judges all have it 30-27. A unanimous decision, all for your winner. While Badahari didn't deliver the knockout everyone expected, he did prevail setting up a certain rematch with current glory heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven. It's no longer a matter of if, but when. That will do it for this edition of Glory Rewind. Don't forget to join us on Saturday, March 31st in Los Angeles for Glory 52, when the unification of the featherweight title takes place as current champion Robin Van Roosmullen takes on interim champion Kevin Van Nostrand, looking to become the first United States Glory men's champion. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel.